flows. Life, a journey of transcendence. Life is the journey for trans transcendence. However, life goes through so many ebbs and flows, waves of emotions and ignorance and conditionings. A rare one indeed attains to transcendence. Lives after lives are wasted in useless pursuits of this and that. Transcendence comes when there is fulfillment in life. Fulfillment requires a deep interplay between opposites. The pair of opposites has a broad spe spectrum is spread around circumstances and situations, objects and beings, etc. This interplay of opposites is based on the movement of energy. When energy flows freely without any obstruction, harmony comes both within and without. This inner and outer harmony brings fulfillment. When life is fulfilled, inner lotus blossoms to spread its beauty and fragrance in many ways. This is transformation and beginning of life of awakening. A rare one as aspires for this and out of those who aspire only the rarest one attains to that. Thus continues the process of transformation of consciousness. While interacting in life, guided by egocentric identities, taboos and religious conditionings, fulfillment does not happen. What really happens is experience. Experience can be good or bad to varying degrees. Instead of can be, certainly the experience is the combination of good and bad in various permutations and combinations. Life is a combination of fulfillment and experience. Both are necessary for life. When there is fulfillment and experience, both interwoven together, transformation becomes easy. For fulfillment, journey begins at individual level with proper understanding and flow of existential bioenergy. When this energy interacts with psychic centers and flows within, it is known as bioenergy or life force or Ellen White or Pranavayu. Its connection with the existential bioenergy or existential source is very important. But because of so many factors, this connection between the energy that flows within and that is part of the existence is broken. This bioenergy, when interacts with the other, it is known as sex. Both aspects are important, but the focus remains on the outer or the other. Two egocentric identities interacting with one another, conflict breeds in. Experience comes through various interactions and different relationships, but not fulfillment. That is what I mean by love, a union. Because in the union, those who join together remain separate from the rest. In a unity, they dissolve. They melt into one another. They become one. And that moment I call the moment of truth. When love has given you unity and oneness too. This is the beginning of the journey of fulfillment. First, 
love gives you unity in your innermost core, then you are no more a body, no more a mind, no more a soul. You are simply one, unnamed, undefined, unclassified, no more determinate, definable, no more comprehensible, a mystery, a joy, a surprise, a jubilation, and a great celebration. First, love gives you an inner unity. This is fana, as Sufis call this happening. And when the inner unity has happened, the second happens on its own. You are not to do anything for it. Then you start falling in unity with the whole beyond you. Then the drop disappears in the ocean and oceans disappears into the drop. That moment, that moment of orgasm, orgasm or orgasmic experience between you and the whole is where you become awakened, a Buddha. That moment is the moment of Buddhahood that is imparted to you. This is enlightenment. Love is the way of preparing soil of your heart. If you are full of love, the world is full of God. It means bioenergy is flowing freely and the process of fulfillment has begun. They go parallel to one another. They are part of one symphony. God is the echo from the universe. When you are in love, this echo is there. When you are not in love, how can there be an echo? God is an echo that lingers in your heart like the dissolving notes of a melody that you have once heard in the wilderness. God is the echo that lingers in your heart like the dissolving notes of a melody that you have heard once in the wilderness. It is only you who are reflected again and again in millions of ways. It is you who are thrown back to yourself again and again. If you are in love, God is. The word truth looks to me a little too dry and desert like. I am not in much tune with the word truth. It looks too logical, it looks too prosaic, it gives you the feeling of philosophy, not of religion. It gives you the idea as if you have concluded. You have come to a conclusion and there has been a syllogism behind it, argumentation, logic and reasoning. Instead of truth, love is my word. Love is of the heart. Truth is partial. Only your head is involved in truth, in love. You are involved as a totality. Your body, your mind, your soul, all are involved. Love makes you a unity, but not a union. Remember, love is unity, not union. My word is love. So I say, my beloved ones, I love you and I would like you to fill 
to fill the whole world with love. I would like you to fill the whole world with love. Let there, let this be your religion. Love is simply love. In love, you can be a Christ. In love, you can be a Buddha. But there is no Buddhist love. And also, there is no Christian love. In love, you disappear. Your mind disappears. In love, you come to an utter relaxation. In love, you disappear. Your mind too disappears. In love, you come to an utter relaxation. Enough for now.